Many competitive gamers look up to tier 1 organizations and dream of joining them. And if you can make that happen for yourself, then you can undoubtedly cement your name into the history of esports. But the barrier of entry is massive, and pro teams only want the best of the best. And why wouldn't they? They have their entire reputation on the line every single season. But climbing that barrier of entry isn't impossible. Think about it for a moment. Imagine that you are trying out for a pro or even just a semi-pro team. What is it that you think they're looking for? Now, imagine you make it onto that team. What do you think that you need to do in order to not get kicked off that team just a few months later? Now, most players assume that individual skill is the only thing that really matters here. Just focus on carrying the game as much as you can, getting more kills or showing off your mechanics. But this kind of mindset is actually a slippery slope, one that causes most players to fall off track and end their career before it ever really starts. But if you're serious about making it onto a pro or even semi-pro team, then it's critical that you understand what it is that they're really looking for, especially when they're recruiting and re-signing their players. Unfortunately, I got a chance to sit down and talk to Donggan Kim, otherwise known as KDG. Now, KDG is a former StarCraft pro turned Overwatch coach who's worked with Tier 1 teams like Seoul Dynasty, Philadelphia Fusion, and now Toronto Defiant. And with the knowledge and wisdom that he's attained after coaching several Tier 1 pro esports teams, KDG has a lot to teach you about what it takes to make it onto a pro team. So the first thing that KDG emphasized when I talked to him was that you need to start thinking beyond pure mechanics. What else is important besides skill? Like, like how they communicate. What what other what other skills do they need? I mentioned only one thing, maybe vocal, maybe like speaking, but there is a uh, many things like uh, game IQ. Game IQ meaning is uh, like a making decision, and then like for example, like how to use your like how to use maps, like and then like uh, when you dive to like an spec line or like uh, when you using like your cooldown, and then maybe these days maybe most important thing is this probably like. Uh, uh, how fast to adapt to new things. So, beyond just mechanics, there also lies game sense, judgment, and perhaps the glue that puts it all together, which is adaptability. Now, it's important to not only know what to do, but also when and how to do it. It's not enough to have the best aim in the lobby, you need to know how to create a situation where that aim can really shine. Who cares if you can win any 1v1 or maybe even 2v1 because it doesn't really matter if you're constantly blinded by flashes or dying to flanks and well-timed peaks. On top of that, you need to learn how to adapt. You need to learn how to be flexible. Esports titles are not static games. They're not like typical traditional sports. These games are forever changing. The rules, the metas, everything about them is shifting like the ground from under you. Those who lose touch with the meta and lose their footing will then fall or stagnate. But those who can maintain their balance will move forward and continue to rise to the top. So now that you've shored up on your game sense and other skills, what is it that comes next? Well, this is where having the right mentality can separate you from everyone else. What is, what is a winning mentality and how do you... Uh, help your players get a winning mentality. When you become a pro player, then you will join the team house and then you will live together and then you will practice together. So you will meet uh, real like uh, world uh, issues. Like uh, sometimes you can uh, fight with the teammate about like uh, in-game opinion or when you're losing or when you struggle or something. But like a winning team meeting is even when you struggle or like don't want to speak, then uh, we have to do our best for our team. So you need to adopt a winning mentality. And it's exactly what it sounds like. But it may be more complex than it initially seems. As KDG said, 
Even when you struggle and you don't want to talk to your teammates, you have to do your best for your team. You have to put your emotions aside and focus on solving problems and winning. The average pro player is very young, and many players will not have learned how to communicate effectively, especially in a team environment. Now, your emotions and feelings are important. They're not to be disregarded and tossed aside. But understand that as a member of a team, you have to commit to the shared goal of that team. That shared goal is victory. So manage your ego and adopt a winning mentality. You might be able to carry all of your games now, but as the skill rating increases and the skill gap between you and your teammates decreases, who knows if you'll be able to keep up. Whatever deficiencies there are in skill, they can be made up for in teamwork and communication. But the key to this is to move past your ego and to not let your emotions cloud your thinking. Now, the winning mentality also entails working hard and developing a strong work ethic. It's a very cliche, I know, but part of adapting and growing as a player entails working through obstacles. Even the stars of their sport or esports, people like Kobe Bryant, never stopped working hard. So what would make you think that something like natural talent would magically bring you to the top of the leaderboard? Most players fall into the idea of thinking that as long as they perform well, then everything is fine. As long as you're winning, you can slow down, relax, and not practice so hard. And on some level, this is true. But eventually, other people are going to catch up if you're not working equally as hard. If you want to be picked up by a pro team, then you need to show that you're committed, not just to the game and the team, but to the hard work and process of improving. So be humble and work hard. Now in esports, when we think of the perfect image of a hardworking competitive player, a lot of us think of Korean players who've dominated games like League of Legends, StarCraft, Overwatch, and many other esports titles. Now there's a bit of magic here, but to understand that magic, we need to really just look at the culture and mindsets behind these players, because it might help you to take on some of that mentality for yourself. So what do these top Korean players have that those who grew up in other regions don't? Korean players is more like a approaching like a serious even you're not a pro player our system like korea system or environment we already like uh, use it to competitive in school because always there is a rank like uh, when you're studying too so we learned from all that and then every parent say that you have to make a research so if you, we decide to become a pro player usually you have to put like your life in professional like not for just like a two years or three years or three or four years because we learned you have to uh, you your life will decide like uh, 19 to until maybe 24 or 23 because uh, we have to go to uh, we have to serve army too like a military too so we don't have a time so you have a limited time so and then you have to put your everything when you're a pro player as someone who briefly lived in Korea, I've seen this for myself. Korea has a strong competitive culture fueled by an unforgiving education system and the looming deadline of mandatory military service. These two things place their lives in a different perspective compared to what you'd see in, say, North America. For them, there's a finite amount of time to get things done. So in this Korean culture, every second counts. And it's not like the talent isn't there in other regions, but that the environment is often just not as conducive to birthing top-level talents. Just as diamonds are made under intense heat and pressure, Korea's esports environment seems to squeeze out the best among the best. So let's bring this all back to the core question at hand. What does it take for someone like you to get signed onto a team? And what can you do, starting now, to start moving in the right direction? Well, this is a complex topic and has a lot of different answers, but here are some things that you can start focusing on, according to KDG. If you wanna be pro player, then I recommend that you will join team for 
uh, competitive. Like for example, like uh, you can learn from uh, university uh, team, or you can join tier two team. But you need to be ready for your skill. So and also, if you are a good player already, many players will <laughs> request friend. So you will find good team as soon as possible. I mean, when you're ready to be a good player, the most important thing is like you have to prove it, prove your skill in rank. So to show your commitment and skill to recruiters, you can start by just joining competitive teams, whether it's in a local amateur league or a high school league or a collegiate league. Just put your name on the map and participate in whatever tournaments you can. Climb the ranks in your game as well. Show off to the world that you really do have what it takes. Because if you think you should be a challenger level player, then get to that rank. If you think you don't deserve to be stuck in gold, you have to climb your way out of gold and get into platinum. It's not enough to just say that you're good and think it, you have to really prove it. But as you do this, as you grind that skill and start playing in different leagues and amateur level teams, you have to really work on that winning mentality. Do whatever it takes to win rather than just performing individually or listening to your emotions. As you do this, it'll be easier to do things like make friends and expand your network. And if you're playing amongst the top 5% of all players already, then surely one of those players that you network with might end up on a tier one or tier two team. And having that connection can be amazing when they're doing tryouts. So take all of this into account and use it to direct your own esports journey. Avoid the pitfalls and poor mindsets that hold others back and focus on KDG's advice. With it, you'll get a leg up over many other players and you'll get yourself one step closer to playing on a pro team. Hey guys, I hope you loved this video and I hope you enjoyed hearing the advice from KDG and I hope it makes a huge difference on your esports journey. If you want to go beyond the lessons we have on this channel, I'll also leave some links below for things like the Esports Elite course, which focuses on teaching you how to improve your gaming skills extremely fast and rank up easier over the course of 66 days. And I'll also leave a link to our live bootcamp for those who are super serious about becoming a pro and just really don't know how to make it happen. And of course, if you're interested in either one of those, then I highly recommend just checking out the reviews. I think hearing from past students really just speaks for itself. But of course, if you're still a beginner, there are tons of free videos on this channel and I highly recommend that you check them all out. I'll leave some links for playlists as well as some more secret videos in the pinned comment below. And as a bonus, if you join the Discord and DM me personally, I'll also send you a free bonus video that you won't find anywhere else. But in the meantime, I hope you keep on grinding hard, getting amazing results, and of course, I'll see you all in the next video.